Okay guys, it's a new day and it's time for another bit of an update on this whole latency thing. Now, if you've been hiding under a rock, you might have missed I put out some figures that caused a bit of a stir and I did talk about this last night on the live stream and JB mentioned it on his stream as well. Now, I'm not going to get too much into my thoughts on this again because I discussed it heavily on the live stream. If you're interested in hearing what I had to say, please do check it out on there. However, over the last sort of day, I have had a lot of messages back and forth and there's been a lot of people sort of chipping in and, and giving me more info and trying to come up with why we're seeing some of the data we're seeing. And today I've been talking with a couple of people, including Inc. FPV and Inc. especially has made a really valid point around offsets being needed as a result of the frame rate differences. So, for instance, Shark Bite is 60 frames a second whereas the DJI low latency is 120 frames a second. And whilst the data was showing that DJI low latency looked faster than Shark Bite, you do need to take into account sort of the frame rate effect as a result of 60 frames a second versus 120. So for instance, in 60 frames a second, a new frame is sent every 16 or so milliseconds. So you do need to take that into account. And he's come up with a calculation which is sort of an offset to adjust for that. So, for instance, on the Shark Bite system, the offset is 8 milliseconds, and on the DJI system, the offset would be 4 milliseconds. And that offset would be an average as a result of the frame rate taking that 16 milliseconds. Now, what I've done is applied this offset to the data that I've already had. And here you can see what the result is. And it does flip things around a little bit because it is always worth taking into account that the shark bite system is 60 frames a second and the DJI low latency is 120 frames a second. It is pushing twice as many frames. So whilst its latency might be slower, it's getting that image on the screen quicker. And when you are measuring that image the way I'm measuring it, that could have an effect. So if we have a look at the digital numbers as a result of these offsets, things do move around. So for instance, if we look at it now as Shark Bite with the Dominator V2s is averaging between 20 and 24 milliseconds. The Scout HDs with the closer measurement, which brought the latency down as well, was in the 13 to 14 milliseconds area. And that brings the DJI latency to 17 to 18 milliseconds and then 22 to 23 and a half milliseconds on the Polar Starlight. Now, this, as I mentioned in Varsite's video, is real best case results on the bench for DJI because DJI is... Um, variable latency it will never be better than this but it will absolutely be worse than this whereas shark bite should be fixed and whilst there may be a slight effect of latency at range certainly nothing like dji so what this would show is that the dji latency would be higher in low latency mode than an integrated shark bite system whilst my doms are a bit slower it's, it's very close. Whether a human would be able to detect three milliseconds, less than three milliseconds is another question. And you can then see that the polar starlight comes out around 22, 23. Now, it is worth mentioning on this that as a result of this offset, this doesn't then fully align with what the DJI system is saying on its display. Because when I am doing um, the DJI system, the numbers on the display are very close to what I'm seeing in my tests, usually within one millisecond. But at the end of the day, we've only pulled four milliseconds off the total DJI numbers, and we've pulled eight milliseconds off the shark bite numbers. So whilst this is a spin on the original figures, I think the offset is a thing to put into the numbers. As I have already said on this a few times, this really isn't an exact science and it's a learning curve for everyone at this point, the way we're doing it. I'm not saying this method is perfect, but it's the only one we have right now outside of a very fast high-speed camera. What this shows is you can spin the figures whichever way you want. 
you can make the figures look better for DJI, you can make the figures look better for Sharkbite, depending on what you do. But I do believe that this 4 millisecond offset for DJI and this 8 millisecond offset for Sharkbite, which is an average offset based on numbers of runs, is a realistic offset to put in. And it then aligns the shark bite more where we would expect it to be but it does sort of push the dji off where we would expect it to be so i'm not sure but i just wanted to put this out there finally as i did say in the live stream last night this isn't about one system being better than the other it is simply about trying to understand what we're seeing in the data and sharing that data so we all have a better understanding of what we're seeing on these systems. Um, there will be a proper video coming on this at some point. I'm, I'm holding back until I get more info. If you guys have got any better ideas, please do put it in the comments. Again, the idea of this offset is to an average of the frame rate time, so 16 milliseconds at um, 60 frames a second or 8 milliseconds roughly at 120 frames a second and what we've done is taken an average of that across multiples which would basically be half and, and that's what we've done and that would put it in sort of the mid territory again with all of these things there is no question that shark bite feels lower latency at range in real world use so regardless of what the numbers show we know that is a reality but it is a game of trying to understand what the data is showing when we are testing this on the oscilloscope versus what we're seeing in the real world. Anyway, that's it. Only a quick one. Please stay safe and I will speak to you guys soon.